first of all, I wanted to mention that the system of three C's is rather a model than uh, a theory, uh, because it is still in process of development. Uh, why a model? Because it is uh, uh, helping to analyze processes, to make predictions, uh, uh, to try to uh, monitor uh, different flows uh, that are taking place in uh, not only in the South uh, Caucasus but in the wider uh, region. And uh, uh, as you can judge from from the name of this this model, the three Cs, it's, it is also an attempt to rethink the uh, the regional dimensions uh, due to a multiple uh, reasons. I'll try to elaborate on, on, on this uh, more a bit later. But uh, when we're talking about the three seas, obviously we're talking about uh, uh, the Mediterranean, the Caspian and uh, the Black Sea. Uh, and when we're talking about um, uh, the model, we're talking primarily about, uh, again, processes that, uh, uh, let, let's put it this way, about the uh, um, the conflicts and the infrastructures, the processes that allow the flows uh, to go from one side to another, and the processes that interrupt uh, those flows. And uh, in general, when we talk about uh, this uh, three C's uh, model, uh, we also talk about uh, an interesting interaction between uh, multiple uh, global and mega regional uh, projects. So why uh, I'll start from from the point why why in our opinion in opinion of the, of the researchers of the Center of the Civilization and Cultural Studies a need to rethink uh, uh, the region appeared. Uh, the the I'll come a bit from 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 far. Uh, we need to understand that throughout the time, the perception of, of uh, time and space are changing due to the development, primarily due to the development of human knowledge uh, and uh, technology. And uh, because of these developments, uh, we start to understand that we uh, have a completely different understanding of, of the uh, space and time. And due to that, since the space and, and time uh, also uh, in, in their consolidated uh, perception symbolized movement. Uh, we also uh, have an opportunity to completely rethink the, the, the movement, the, the life itself, the processes that are going on. Uh, why, why does this happen? Well, if we compare the, the speeds uh, of processes uh, in Middle Ages, we can see that uh, a caravan or a sheep uh, would, would reach from uh, one point to another in the world in, in several years. Uh, and uh, uh, throughout the development of humanity, the, these speeds have changed completely, which means that uh, your understanding of uh, where you are and how you can interact with the rest of the world are changing significantly. And today, uh, you cannot uh, observe processes uh, taking place in one particular region uh, in a vacuum with, with no connection with the rest of the world because uh, things are way more interconnected now than they were before. Uh, and they are, first of all, they are interconnected because uh, of our possibility to know about what is happening on the other side of the, of the globe. Uh, just by uh, clicking uh, a button on your computer uh, and simply by uh, you know surfing the internet for a couple of minutes. Uh, this, this provides you with enormous amount of, of various opportunities, but this also creates enormous uh, speed of processes going on uh, and uh, also increases the numbers, uh, the number of processes going on. Uh, and it, well, a number of interconnected processes going on in, in uh, a region or a mega region or uh, in, in wider global context, uh, which means that we need um, to have new measurement tools that would allow us uh, to analyze these processes uh, more effectively. 
why is the, does the, this need appear? Because uh, the multiplicity and complexity of, of uh, processes uh, does not allow us to uh, numerically evaluate them, which means that uh, conceptually different tool, uh, tools are needed to, to evaluate these processes. So the three, uh, the, the three uh, C's model is an approach or an attempt uh, to develop so, such kind of, uh, of a tool uh, and, and to understand how we can uh, perceive and analyze uh, what is going on in, in this region. I will start from uh, this uh, geographical expansion, expanding of, of, of uh, our region. Uh, well, the uh, classical perception of South Caucasus uh, is uh, something that more or less uh, started to develop uh, not, not uh, uh, that much far away. I mean, uh, well, conceptually, we can talk about the competition between three uh, superpowers in the region, uh, Iran, so the Ottoman Empire, and Russia, that have formulated uh, this uh, triangle in which the region of South Caucasus appeared. This, this region, uh, for example, when we talk about uh, the, the naming, uh, we uh, can remember that uh, during the Soviet uh, period, this region was called uh, Zakaf Kazia, which is logically a description uh, beyond the, the uh, Caucasus mountains from uh, a center uh, that was governing this territory during the Soviet era. So for, for from the point of view of Moscow, uh, this uh, territory was beyond Caucasus. Uh, if we, uh, the, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, I'm, I'm talking about uh, quite uh, obvious things now because we need this background to elaborate on further discussions. Uh, after the collapse of Soviet U Union, a need to re-describe the territory appeared. And that's why, uh, more uh, neutral uh, term started to circulate, which is South Caucasus. Uh, but also, again, uh, the descriptions and, and the namings uh, often are ideolog uh, ideologized, and uh, uh, we can already see um, the competition between various uh, uh, regional, mega regional, and global projects in the uh, terms and the namings uh, used to describe various uh, uh, processes and entities. Uh, a bright example of this is uh, uh, the competition between two integration projects, Eastern Partnership and the Eurasian Economic Union. Eastern Partnership uh, is describing the territory, again, from a different center, in this case, from, from Brussels, uh, and is describing the territory uh, that lays in the eastern borders of the European Union. When we're talking about Eurasian Economic Union, uh, again, here we're dealing with another center, again, Moscow, which is describing uh, a more global uh, empiric perception of, of the territory uh, Moscow as a center wants to uh, control. So there are different kinds of, of um, very interesting uh, descriptions that uh, allow us also to observe um, uh, competitions between various uh, various processes. So uh, why is uh, this uh, uh, territory between the three seas uh, interesting and important uh, globally? Uh, and why uh, a smaller component of this territory, uh, meaning to say the South Caucasus, uh, is uh, very important? Uh, by two very important reasons. Uh, infrastructure and resources. These are the two key aspects that gain the importance of any territory in, in the world. And here, since uh, also historically, uh, the uh, South Caucasus and the three C area has been uh, probably the most or one of the most important uh, transit uh, territories uh, throughout, through, throughout the history of humanity. Uh, it's uh, traditionally uh, 
continues to gain additional importance because we can see that the more the humanity develops, the more the technologies develop, uh, the number of, of uh, infrastructure passing through this territory is increasing. Uh, and uh, the, the, this, this uh, means that the interconnection between the entities that are united, uh, are, are connected by this infrastructure uh, also increases and uh, becomes dependent on, on the multiplicity of these uh, infrastructures. So this is the, the first uh, key aspect. The second key aspect here is the uh, multiplicity of resources. Uh, obviously, we're talking about uh, oil, gas, uh, various mineral resources, water, etc. So these are the resources that are uh, extremely important and, and are uh, the, the importance of these resources is continually growing. And here we're talking not about only about the resources that are present in the region, but also about the resources that are passing through the region uh, via this uh, uh, communication channels I've mentioned earlier. Uh, so these two aspects, which are basically the uh, uh, basis of, of life of any system, uh, are uh, significantly increasing the importance of this region. Uh, and obviously, the control over these resources and control over these infrastructures and channels of communication uh, are making uh, the competition in this region into a global process that is influencing the entire world. And here, if we observe the number of various global projects that are, that are going on, that are uh, being implemented or being planned or being talked about throughout this past period of time, we will see that almost every single global power or regional power is trying to uh, engage in this territory. Uh, and engage uh, not simply via simple engagement, not simply via participation in this or that project, but via uh, every everybody is attempting to have uh, a share in control in at least one of, of these processes. And we can see that we're having uh, uh, various channels controlling uh, con connecting east and west north and south uh, and connecting uh, uh, in in various ways i mean we're talking about pipes we're talking about cables etc etc uh, so uh, here we come to a very important point where uh, the competition uh, in controlling these channels of communication and the resources uh, results in creation of the second important uh, aspect. So when we're talking about the, the, uh, the mechanisms of interaction in this um, uh, territory, uh, there are obviously two major types of processes that, that we can uh, mention, uh, integration and disintegration. And uh, obviously, implementation of uh, such projects as uh, different kind of pipelines, roads, uh, internet cables, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, are processes of integration. Similarly, as for example, political, social, uh, economic projects, integration projects that are aiming at engaging. Uh, the entire region or several component, components of the region uh, in wider entities, such as uh, wider Europe or uh, Eurasian territory uh, or uh, Sunni, uh, territory of Sunni interest of te or territory of Shia interest, because we're also uh, talking about uh, this kind of integration processes uh, that, that are clearly visible uh, in, in, in this territory and also are competing because we can obviously see how the Shia projects uh, initiated by Iran and Sunni projects initiated by, uh, for example, Saudi Arabia or Turkey 
are competing uh, with each other uh, in this area as well. So it is not only about uh, economy, it is not only about Eastern Partnership and Eurasia Economic Union uh, competing with each, each other. Uh, it is also uh, value-based competition, it is uh, ideology-based competition, it is religious competition, it is economic, political, social, cultural, and all other uh, dimensions of competition are taking place uh, in this territory. So here, uh, the integration processes are, are multiple, are uh, various, and, and are of a very different kind, uh, and of a very different level of success, uh, because we can also evaluate uh, different integration projects and see that some are uh, obviously uh, achieving some, some, some tangible results, and some are failing. Uh, also, what is important that these processes are of, of a different speed and pace, uh, which means that their potential duration, their potential uh, effect time-wise also varies from, from each other. For example, the uh, uh, project initiated by China, which is again passing through this region and uh, is entitled as a Great uh, Silk Road, uh, is uh, a process of a completely different speed than, for example, same Eastern Partnership I've mentioned earlier, uh, and of, of a completely different uh, uh, perception of potential duration, let's put it this way. Uh, so this means that we also need to understand how uh, the, the pace, the speed, the, the potential duration of each uh, of the competing projects uh, influences the overall picture of the, of the region. Uh, so the another process uh, following the inter uh, integration or confronting the integration are the processes of disintegration. And here we obviously primarily speak about uh, conflicts. Uh, while speaking about the uh, three C's model, uh, there are various uh, conflicts that are directly connected with the logic of, of this uh, uh, integration disintegration uh, dilemma and with the com competition of global projects. Uh, to name a few, uh, well, obviously, apart from the Russian-Georgian conflict, which has two components, uh, Abkhazian and South Ossetian, and uh, Armenian-Turkish, which has two components, Armenian-Turkish and uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. There are also uh, several uh, very important conflicts beyond the region of South Caucasus, uh, uh, out of which I would mention the Syrian one and the Ukrainian, because they directly affect, again, the uh, competition in terms of controlling uh, the seashores. In this particular case, we're talking about Black Sea and Mediterranean Sea, respectfully, uh, respectfully respectingly. And uh, also uh, controlling, uh, again, communications going throughout the wider region. Uh, here, when we're talking about a wider region, uh, uh, I would like to remind you that there have been several attempts to describe a, a wider region uh, throughout the time, uh, and one of one of these attempts was the American attempt of this uh, Greater Middle East description, which uh, is not to full extent successful in my opinion because it is not descriptive enough. Enough. It it, it is not uh, describing the entire. Uh, logic of, of, of what is happening in, in this uh, geographical and political and economic uh, territory. So uh, what, what is the role of conflicts in the context of the uh, 3C system? Uh, these are, uh, uh, how do you call it, quirks, uh, the, the jams, the jamming uh, uh, mechanisms that allow to interrupt any kind of uh, infrastructure and communication uh, based on a particular need or interest of this or that uh, global or regional plan. Uh, for example, if you want to interrupt uh, a process going 
from east to west, uh, you uh, initiate a, a conflict within the logic of the north-south uh, movement, and vice versa. Uh, so uh, when we're talking about how the processes are being constantly interrupted uh, in, in this region, we can see that uh, the challenges uh, for peaceful development and integration uh, in South Caucasus and in the wider region uh, around the three seas uh, are ex extremely significant, are long lasting and uh, are conditioned primarily with uh, enormous competition between uh, the global projects. Here, when we talk about uh, particular uh, pro global projects, we can see uh, the following uh, components. Let's put it this way. Uh, the first global project is uh, the attempt of Russia to restore, uh, to some extent, uh, what it has lost after the collapse of the Soviet Union, obviously. And these are uh, mainly, uh, let's say, uh, no, Russia. Russia is 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 not that successful in uh, exercising soft power, so it is more related to hard power, uh, for, forceful integration. Let's put it this way. Uh, and uh, in some terms, uh, in in some cases, Russia's behavior can be described as. Uh, uh, guarantor of in, 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 uh, unsafety uh, rather than a guarantor of stability or safety. So uh, Russian uh, uh, activities of Russia are logically uh, coming from Russia's political interests, but uh, the, the arsenal of instruments Russia is exercise, exercising is often more limited than than one could could expect or could assume, because uh, because of the lack of systems uh, within the country itself uh, that would allow them to more effectively exercise the soft power instruments, and we have observed uh, these kind of situations uh, in case of Georgia, in case of Ukraine. Uh, in case of uh, Belarus, in case of Moldova, I'm not even talking about uh, the, the recent escalations because here we have uh, a more uh, complex situation. Uh, we also need to understand that this past, uh, after, after the, the US elections, the situation has started to increase a bit in terms of um, uh, a more constructive uh, approach of the new U.S. Uh, leadership, uh, because the, the Trump period was another challenge for the, the another global challenge, but also another challenge for this uh, particular territory, because uh, activities of Donald Trump and his administration has have, have created additional uh, jams in, in in this in this region. Uh, and now the Biden administration is trying, at least to some extent, to uh, you know get rid of, of several mistakes. Well, first of all, we're talking about U.S.-Iran relations because, uh, as we can see now, there are some uh, well, let's put it carefully, positive uh, tendencies in development of uh, bilateral relations. So, uh, what what can we uh, yeah, an another very important actor here, obviously, is Turkey, because uh, Turkey has multiple uh, uh, faces, roles, and, and uh, multiple uh, opportunities of, of action here. Uh, let's put it this way. Turkey is uh, a traditional regional player. Turkey is a NATO member. Turkey is a, a, a state uh, in Sunni world that uh, uh, periodically claims leadership for, 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 for this uh, uh, format. Uh, Turkey also claims the leadership for Turkic world, obviously. So these uh, 
uh, qualifications or this this qualities let's put it this way uh, allow Turkey to exercise its uh, its tools in in quite a wide multiplicity uh, and here uh, there are natural uh, confrontations and natural long-term uh, competitions uh, primarily between Russia and Turkey however uh, Recently, there is a very interesting new uh, logic that has been uh, formulated by several Russian and Turkish uh, actors as a, a competitive com uh, cooperation, uh, which means that uh, both sides agree that they have a, a long term competition in the region, but uh, in a mid and shorter term perspective, they can agree on uh, cooperation cases uh, in this or that uh, context. Uh, when we're uh, talking about uh, opportunities for the for the region, uh, so far I have been more more talking about challenges, unfortunately, because they're really and and in light of of the development throughout the past several years, uh, they have been growing and and uh, accumulating. Uh, but obviously, there are also uh, uh, various opportunities for, for the regional integration. Uh, and these opportunities, uh, in my opinion, are pri primarily connected with the ability of the entities within uh, the region to initiate uh, uh, integration uh, projects with each other. Uh, here we have a very, very interesting phenomenon uh, and I'm coming back to the uh, to, to the challenges. Uh, the phenomenon is the following: We have, for example, uh, in in the region of South Caucasus, we have three recognized and three unrecognized entities. We have uh, Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and we have uh, Abkhazia, South Ossetia, and uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, and uh, when we observe communication between these entities. Um, we see that there, we see that the uh, cooperation potential between uh, these entities uh, is uh, ha has enormous amount of uh, of obstacles, uh, as compared to the cooperation potential between these entities and other entities beyond the region. So uh, the, the, if, if we sum up this component, uh, the cooperation uh, capacity between, for example, I don't know, Georgia and uh, Germany can be more than between uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan or Georgia and Azerbaijan in some extent, uh, or uh, unrecognized entities and recognized entities, etc. Uh, this means that the external actors' opportunities to interfere in integration processes in this region are way more than the internal potential of uh, creating cooperation frameworks within the region itself. This, this is uh, probably one of the most significant uh, problems and obstacles for the peaceful cooperation uh, in the region. Uh, but coming back to the, to the opportunities, as I have mentioned, uh, the uh, one of the two major types of processes uh, is the integration process. And here, when we're talking about integration processes, uh, we can observe um, very interesting uh, uh, logic throughout the past 10 years that the European Union has initiated with the support of the United States. Uh, I'm talking about the Eastern Partnership because it is uh, an integration opportunity that uh, has two major components in it. First, it is offering uh, already formulated rules of the game to a territory which is uh, uh, in need of such rules, 
because after the collapse of the Soviet Union, these countries that have been uh, part of, of, of the Soviet Union, the six countries that have been part of the Soviet Union are still in seek of uh, new rules of the game that would allow them to effectively interact in, in uh, the, the world, in the wider region, etc. Uh, so the European Union offers, proposes these rules of the game, saying that we have the standards that we have developed after the uh, Second World War because we understood that uh, we will not we cannot afford the third world war uh, which means that we need to uh, establish uh, a joint control over the resources uh, to make all necessary steps to avoid uh, global conflicts in the future and because of that agreement and because of the, that uh, joint understanding we were able to develop further common rules of the game allowing us to interact peacefully uh, and with mutual uh, benefits uh, throughout the past uh, decades so this is what this is the first uh, component of this partnership and and the initiative that the european union offered to the six post-soviet countries now the second component here is the uh, opportunity to uh, expand beyond the traditional understanding of regions, uh, because uh, beforehand uh, South Caucasus was South Caucasus, and for for Moldova, uh, Belarus, and Ukraine, there was not even a clearly formulated regional dimension, uh, allowing them to you know uh, uh, think uh, of mechanisms of of joint integration. Although there were various uh, uh, attempts. However, the, there was no uh, clearly formulated regional uh, framework or dimension. So the Eastern Partnership as a, a proto-region uh, was another opportunity proposed by the uh, European Union uh, as part of this Eastern Partnership initiative. Uh, this uh, process and this initiative has uh, accumulated, uh, has, has, has stimulated uh, the developments uh, in, in the entire Eastern Partnership. And basically, uh, the results of this simulation were uh, uh, the intensification of activities of Russia to ensure its control over one of the most important components of the 3C system, you know, the uh, northeastern shore of the Black Sea. <clears throat> so here we are talking about uh, Crimea, but also we're talking to some extent about Abkhazia, uh, because Russia understands clearly that with without access to uh, the seashore of the of the Black Sea, the the significant part of the seashore of the Black Sea, uh, it it will uh, have extremely bad conditions for continuing the game uh, in this dimension. So this was this was the the, the, the first uh, stimulation of uh, or, or intensification of the process, uh, and uh, the process is going on in South Caucasus. Uh, I mean the 44-day war, but beforehand, uh, also the uh, Velvet Revolution was also to some extent stimulated by uh, the uh, initiation of the Eastern Partnership uh, here. Uh, similarly, as the process is going on in Belarus, uh, because again, we're talking here about proposing new rules of the game, proposing new framework of uh, a new, new value based framework that uh, creates an opportunity to rethink uh, the, the role of each of these entities uh, in the in the global world to rethink the uh, arsenal of tools that each of these entities uh, has and can exercise in, in, in global processes. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to gradually sum up my, my presentation and by summing up, uh, let's, let's, let's see what uh, at the end of the day are in fact the challenges and opportunities uh, for uh, South Caucasus and wider uh, region uh, today. Uh, I think that the competition between integration and the disintegration processes is key in terms of 
identifying or, or, or prognosing the possible developments that will take place in the region. Uh, what I mean by this is if there are opportunities to establish long lasting uh, projects that in integration projects that uh, connects uh, various important actors with each other and ensure flow of resources uh, and uh, initiation of new products uh, via via this flow, then uh, it will be much harder for these integration processes to succeed because more uh, players will be interested in stability and security in, in the region. However, on another hand, if uh, now what, what happens now in the region is the uh, uh, competition to control the uh you know the this this corks this gems uh whoever establishes establishes the control over uh nagorno karabakh conflict uh because there is currently an ongoing conversation about uh so-called uh de blockade which is in fact uh, in my opinion not a conversation about the blockade, but a conversation about rethinking the blockade uh, and and re 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 redistributing the uh, influence mechanisms and tools on on exercising the blockade uh, uh, in the region. So this uh, th these processes are uh, strongly competing with the inter integrative uh, projects in the region. Simultaneously with the discussions on the day blockade, the EU is uh, announcing that it is extremely interested in the region and it is planning to, uh, to implement various development projects in the region. Uh, we're talking about, here, we're talking about continuing the support to Georgia, for example, but also a significant financial assistance to Armenia uh, to uh, intensify the economic processes in the country. Uh, so here we can we can see that uh, these integrate, integrative and disintegrative uh, processes are uh, going as as they call it in Russian nazdrev nazdrev, which is I, I don't know if it can be <laughs> translated uh, uh, to English, but uh, are 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 in in strong competition with each other and are running like breathing in in the neck of one another. Uh, I hope that this, this was more or less equivalent translation to, to this Nazdrev uh, Nazdrev uh, So, uh, as, a, as a final sum up uh, formulation, I would say that what, in, in my opinion, can be uh, recommended to primarily to the societies of, of the uh, South Caucasus region, uh, because the uh, establishments and authorities are, are way more problematic in terms of reflection, uh, is to understand what are, uh, despite all the problems and the issues, are the cooperative uh, potential within the region. Because the more the cooperative potential within the region is exercised, uh, the more uh, opportunities for the region to be an actor ra rather than uh, uh, a field uh, are, uh, which means that the more uh, well perceived, well analyzed the processes within the region are by the regional actors themselves, um, the more stable the situation in, in this region will be.